hope you fiends are having a great weekend. Nice spooky one. Uh, let me tell you what. Many moons ago, my weekend, I got abducted by aliens. And when I did, I discovered Mazinga. And that's who we're talking about tonight on the Midnight Chamber. <laughs> Mazinga. Probably a lot of you may not know who Mazinga is, uh, but you might know who Big Tony O'Farrell is from Rubber Wolf Graphics, as he's done some pretty iconic horror punk album covers. Nuking the Living Dead, Calibreeze, Under a Nightmare, and the list goes on, so on and so forth. He's done a shitload of artwork. He's, more recently, he's done stuff for the Creeping Cruds. Um, so, you know, so this is Big Tony's band. Well, he's in the band. He's the bass player of the band um, and one of the songwriters. So Mazinga was formed in November of 1995 uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It consisted of Mark McFinn, uh, Chris the Box Taylor, uh, Don Blum of the Von Bondies, and Big Tony. This particular release I'm going to go over today is the Cobra Youth Split. This is their third 7-inch. Uh, came out in 99. Uh, and this is another, I believe uh, this is going to be another one of those records that I got out of that uh, buying haul I got from TV right before the first Let's Kid UK tour, or uh, European tour. And it turned me on, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure Big Tony, Big Tony was part of the Antidote Records uh, message board, and that was where I initially met him years and years ago. And I'm pretty sure he turned me on to Mazinga through that message board, but the first thing I ever bought was the Cobra Youth Split. Um, and man, I fell in love with this band, because... If there is one thing that I have, I am a bigger sci-fi fan than I ever ever was a horror fan. Uh, I was, I spent five years in a space punk band, and uh, Tony and I had a lot of things in common like that. We were both big Hawkwind fans, among other things, and of course, you know, some dirty, nasty, gritty garage rock. Everything from, uh, oh. Obviously the Misfits, but uh, I don't know, a lot of that Detroit garage stuff, a lot of the, the funky Chicago stuff, you know, from the 80s, whatever. We're not about, we don't, we don't need to be listening to that. What we need to be talking about is this split. It's a pretty cool split, uh, but before we get too deep into this, because there's a fair bit of history to cover behind this. Let's cut right here, take a look at the vinyl, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Alright, Monster Kids, check this out. Classic fucking Mazinga. Um, their logo always just got me. I, I still don't have a t-shirt of that, and I'd really like one. I love that logo. And then Tony's classic. I don't know what, like, I can understand maybe he doesn't have enough detail why he's being critical of it. Everyone's, you know, every artist is critical of their fucking work. But look at that. Fucking Namorita, about ready to rip your face off. But, like, you know, being all heroic. Very comic booky, and that, that. Pretty awesome. And Cobra Youth. I mean, what a fucking gimmick. Look at that. Yes, and that's the track listing of the, of the 45. Just crazy. And then we've got Sweet Insert. Mazinga side, members of the band. And uh, to note that the track listing is out of order compared to the artwork. The artwork was done prior to the uh, release of this. Yes, Mazinga's debut coming this summer. So it was previous to the full length. But the, uh, the, the tape had 
like they sent to the pressing plant had a different track listing so needless to say it's slightly wrong on the 45 just so you don't think you have a bootleg or anything it is incorrect compared to the artwork Cobra youth side and you get a sweet comic book Oh, and did I mention it's on Reanimator? Reanimator! Another kick ass release from Reanimator. And then finally, let's take a look at the. Uh, oh god, I'm knocking crap around. Take a look at the 45 itself. Yeah, Tony did the uh, the artwork before the, it went to the pressing plant and the tape was wrong. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't put the song titles on the Cobra Youth side, because it would take up the whole fucking thing. It's like one giant long clusterfuck of punk. It's great. Alright, and there you go. Cobra Youth Split with Mazinga. Tony's artwork just... I mean, the guy is super critical of his old stuff, as most artists are. I mean, come on. You look back at some of the dumb shit you've done in the past be it just you know you being young or most as most artists go unexperienced and just raw artwork i mean come on i'm pretty sure even andy warhol looks back to some of his stuff and just cringes you know or whatever insert artist here probably cringes at their early work and, you know, that's everybody. Everybody who creates things looks back at their older stuff after they've gotten some more experience and cringes at it. But, you know, in uh, my opinion, it's pretty sweet artwork. He got into a thing where he was putting, like, badass, like, comic girls on a lot of their uh, record covers, which is awesome. And in this case, you know, this 45 has got three tracks on well, technically four tracks on their side. You've got Omega Race, Namorita, Had Enough, and then uh, there's a hidden track on there called Get Your Cock, uh, Get Your Cock Out, uh, Coke Dick is a Bitch. That's a hell of a title right there. And uh, needless to say, Namorita is on, the, on their side of the cover. <laughs> Seriously, Get Your Cock Out is such, like, that's like someone let Mark McFinn off his leash and just let him go haywire with the lyrics. It's awesome. Um, it had been a while since I heard that track. I had completely forgotten it was on this 7-inch. This um, but, yeah. Okay, so, around this time as well in Mazinga, they brought on... Um, uh, Denny Gray on second guitar, which I, I've only known them as a four piece, you know, bass, guitar, drums, and singer. But they had uh, Denny Gray on baritone guitar, and he ran that through a bass amp, and they gave him this real nasty, dirty, garagey sound that they never could capture recorded just right. I mean, that's a real problem sometimes getting the live sound to translate well into the studio. Um, I know I've had that problem. I know a lot of people have had that problem. And that's, you know, you'll get that on a lot of early records with some bands where their live show just will knock your, you know, knock you right on your ass, melt your face. But then, uh, you know, you get into the studio and it's not quite right. Um, so, it happens. Uh, the record, 500 press, all black, Photocopy, inner and outer sleeve. Nice little comic book on the inside. But, I mean, this is like primo underground Kinko's type stuff. Uh, pretty cool, though. 
and yeah. Cobra Youth were just like they were another Ann Arbor band that were really tight with uh, Mazinga played a bunch of shows together and here was an interesting tidbit that Tony let me in on that the Von Bondies who are pretty big um, both bands on this split had members of the Von Bondies in it because Don Blum went on to play drums for the Von Bondies and then also uh, Jason Stolsteimer the guitarist was playing guitar for Cobra Youth and you might know uh, Jason Stolsteimer by the 30 seconds back in the early 2000s that the Detroit garage rock scene was kind of getting mainstream attention I think mean, like uh, Detroit's always had a hell of a garage rock scene and just they've got this just rock and roll fucking spirit seriously you want some good rock and roll check out some of the Detroit bands but uh, you know when the White Stripes and Jack White got really big in the early 2000s yeah, that was back when everybody was looking for the next Seattle you know you, like at one point Columbus in the 90s like the late 90s was looked at to be the next Seattle because you had bands like the New Bomb Turks coming out of there and uh, I think the believe the Black Keys you know they're huge but they they came out of Columbus um, but then Detroit they you know people were focusing in on that and Jason Stolsteimer is kind of famous for getting assaulted by Jack White during that particular time uh, I have no idea what that story is. I just know it happened. Um, might be something to look up. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, and Cobra Youth, they were playing crazy fast songs because I believe there, there's some ridiculous ass amount of songs on here. There's like 10 songs and it's a 45. So the, the songs are probably like 45 seconds of pop, if that good stuff so Mazinga gives you four songs and Cobra Youth gives you like 10 or 11 craziness on a 45 so I mean it is just kick you in the teeth fucking like garagey punk goodness um, this being the third uh, 45 the band put out and then with Denny Gray in the band it's probably the closest at the time that the band was getting to having their live sound translate onto uh, the recorded soundscape. And if anyone remembers the late 90s, it was a complete clusterfuck when it came to recording techniques. Uh, engineers that didn't want to do things the old way, sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. People were like, new metal was huge. Uh, pop punk was huge, you know. Um, what the hell else was going on? A lot of weird industrial shit. So translating a garage rock band and getting an engineer to be able to get that down on tape, because yeah, a lot of people were still using tape mostly. Um, digital was definitely a thing, but it wasn't near like it is today. Now it's if you find someone with tape it's going to be expensive and you'd better be practiced up that's all i'm saying practice 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 so uh but the good thing about you know a garage rock band doing that in the late 90s is actually through the, the late 80s and into and through the 90s the lo-fi garage rock scene which i love oh fuck man it's it's like fine wine just the fucking weird lo-fi garage rock stuff like the Mighty Caesars and the early Turk stuff, and um, oh man, uh, the Double Dogs. Just there's a lot of really good, weird fucking garage rock stuff out there. And uh, you know, Mazinga was tapping in on that. They had they they were, they were tapping that Detroit rock and roll vibe with their own sci-fi. And later on, they would get into a little bit of the horror stuff because come on, Tony's a huge fucking horror fan look at some of his artwork look at it in fact you know what go right here in the link in the description and pick up some of the rubber wolf graphics comics 
Um, I believe it's just Rubber Wolf Comics, but pick that shit up. He's fucking putting out amazing comics. Look, look. Amazing comics. Amazing. Pick these fucking things up. Like, if you like old EC comics, you will dig the shit out of this. I mean, some of the artwork in here reminds me of old Ghost Rider comics, which I absolutely adore. EC stuff, spooky tales. Man, get that. Get on that. Um, but yeah, getting the Zynga to... Getting them on tape the way they really, really sounded was hard. And what you came out with was this particular split. And Namorita was one of the first songs I ever fell in love with, with this band. I mean, to, to this day, it's still... I mean, some people may not even consider it horror punk. I don't give a flying fuck. It is in my top 10 horror punk songs. It has been since I was like 22. Still is to this day. Really good tune. Um, Omega Race, which I think, if I believe, if I remember right, was one of Tony's first full, like, start to finish songs he wrote for this band. Killer fucking track. Badass. Had Enough is definitely a nod back to some of that early 80s fucking, like, right, like, quasi-punky garage rock stuff that everybody was listening to in the band. Um, like, Naked Ray Gun, that was, that's a band that you can tell they listened a lot to. And then Get Your, get your Cock Out, I mean, that's just straight up fucking early 80s hardcore punched in the face, but Mazinga style. Fucking awesome. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the album in a nutshell. And it's not terribly expensive. You can find the fuckers floating around Discogs. Uh, it's really fun to track the Mazinga stuff down. I'm pretty sure you can get the full-length Mazinga record still on Inter Interpunk. Uh, if you can go out and grab that, that's a, that's a really good one. They, they got a couple of releases that are extremely hard to find, and some of uh, one or two of them might be one two of them might be digital only I'm not sure um, but yeah Mazinga cosmic fucking rock and roll I mean dirty nasty fucking Michigan rock and roll uh, really catchy good melody and of course the artwork is fucking on point for sure so yeah I mean, it's probably no, like less than 10 bucks on Discogs if, they, if there are copies up there. Fucking go out and grab one. There's no reason. So yeah. Alien Abductions. Cosmic Rock and Roll. Midnight Chamber. I'll see you fuckers next time.